Welcome, you're listening to Operation Self Reset with Jake Naraki. What is going on, you freaking awesome people? Welcome back to Operation Self Reset. My name is Jake Naraki, coming to you live from Milwaukee, Wisconsin, where each and every week we dive into a different topic in the world of personal development. Today, there are no sponsors. There's nobody to interrupt this awesome podcast. Um, Truly, this is something I worked on for quite a while, and I'm excited to share with you guys. Uh, It's something that I realized actually today when I was getting out of the gym. Um, I was feeling really good about myself. I kind of been on this new cleansing kind of hypnotic kind of crazy self-check of where I'm at with my body and my mind, spiritually, all those different types of things. And in that moment, as I was walking out of the gym, I was like, man, you know what? I could go and, and have some ice cream tonight to celebrate, you know, to, to kind of feel good. And it reminded me of being cocky and arrogant in that, that moment. And why is that is because we all go through this progress of insecure, cocky, and then our excellence. Now, obviously, I'll get into that in a little bit. But before I do, I want to kind of get back to the fundamentals of Operation Self Reset, which is screaming at the top of our lungs. I'm freaking awesome. Sounds ridiculous. It is ridiculous because if you are a new listener, you're thinking to yourself right now, Jake, I never heard you before. I'm still trying to understand what you're all about. Do I like you? Do I hate you? Should I subscribe to your podcast? Should I delete your podcast? Well, if there was a time to delete your podcast, it would probably be now. Um, Don't delete. I'm not going to delete your podcast. It's actually my podcast. Uh, Anyway, I digress. The awesome sauce is nothing more than screaming at the top of your lungs that I'm freaking awesome. Why do I feel it's important for us to do this? Number one, it makes us get comfortable with the uncomfortable, which is probably the most craziest, best thing that I have ever thought of or really decided to stand on. The reasoning is because anytime you want to change, anytime you want to become better, anytime you want a new job, relationship, home, go traveling, do something outside of your comfort zone, you need to be comfortable with the uncomfortable because all of us are comfortable in our home. All of us are strong and mature and direct and focused in comfortable places. But it's when you step outside of your performance envelope, when you step outside of that box, whatever you want to call it, that is where your true identity lies. All of us can do better in so many different facets of our life. Why don't we? Because we are uncomfortable in a very uncomfortable situation. If you are uncomfortable being in a social networking atmosphere, you're not going to bring your best self. You're not going to present yourself well. You're not going to get the contacts needed. If you go into a gym and you are not comfortable in a gym setting, are you going to have the best workout of your life? Of course you're not because you're uncomfortable. You feel awkward and weird and and people are doing jumpy jacks and you're just trying to figure out how to, you know, do you feel comfortable in the spandex pants, which are really popular nowadays in the health industry? So with that, it kind of brought me to the realization we need to start doing something that allows us to wake ourselves up, allows us to open up, allows us to be who we are meant to become in a space and in a system and in a method that is easy to do. You can do it anywhere. You don't need any special app or, or journal or anything crazy. It is nothing more just proclaiming your awesomeness. And it sounds fluffy and it sounds ridiculous. And you're thinking, Jake, you know what? I am a very mature individual. I don't need to tell myself I'm awesome because I know I am. Well, good for you, my buddy. But if there are people that are listening to this that are thinking to themselves, man, I could use a little pep in myself. I could use a little, you know, like massage, just something to kind of like wake me up. This would be it. NFL players, sports athletes use... um basically uh, salts, like uh, smelling salts, they're called, which is nothing more than ammonia kind of uh, taped in a glass, small glass bottle that is wrapped with cotton. And they break this little bottle that has the ammonia in it and they sniff it before they go into action, before they go into a game setting. And it kind of wakens them up. Uh, Basically, smelling ammonia doesn't really waken you up, but it alerts you. It, It kind of like, whoa, pulls you back, pulls you into reality. And sometimes we need that. And so hopefully this awesome sauce can be your smelling salts in your progression of life. So if you wouldn't mind joining me, 
I'm going to take you through the process. Are we ready, people? All right, here we go. So we're going to stand in a position of power. If you're sitting, I want you to clench your legs, as in squeeze them. If you are driving, squeeze onto that steering wheel. Lock your elbows. Clench your, your gluteus maximus. If you are able to stand, I want you to stand up straight. I want you to put your chest out, your shoulder blades back. I want you to put your arms overhead. I want you to wiggle your fingers. Give it the thumbs up, the bullhorns, the pinkies out. I don't care what you do. All I care is that you are standing in a position of power. I want you to close your eyes. Put your chin in the upper position to look towards your future self. Basically, what you're doing right here, right now, is that you're giving yourself amazing chemicals released out of your body. You're allowing yourself to, to release those hormones and energy that is confined within you. If you don't believe me, watch an amazing TED Talk by Amy Cuddy. She talks about the power of power positions. This is real science, people. This is not just something that Jake Naraki made up. So, on the count of three, I want you to scream with me, I'm freaking awesome. It's weird, it's awkward, it makes you feel silly but nothing more <clears throat> excuse me it makes you feel connected to yourself it, it's pulling you out of your comfort zone and doing something uncomfortable so if you wouldn't mind joining me on the count of three we're going to scream i'm freaking awesome here we go one two three i'm freaking awesome <laughs> Woo! that's right people awkward weird whatever you want to call it i don't care it works i have received multiple numerous emails and social media posts from other individuals saying how by doing the awesome sauce it it reminded them of things that they can't do some people can't do the awesome sauce and if you're one of those individuals that's okay i i hope to build a relationship with you a rapport that you can join me in screaming i'm freaking awesome um because this is if this is your first time or if you're still kind of struggling pulling that out within yourself um i challenge you to do it um it just shows how reserved you are in in your own world it's time to open up and let everybody see how freaking awesome you truly are so with that being said, let's take a deep breath. <sighs> Exhale, and let's get started in some awesomeness. So today we're going to be talking about insecure, cocky, and excellence. Now, again, refraining and getting back to the opening of this episode in particular, I talked about where did this idea come from. Lately, I've been going through this new health body routine, been working out once or twice a day, been eating and regulating the things that are going into my body. I've deleted caffeine out of my system. I'm doing a lot of weird things. Today, I walked out of the gym around 6.30. I felt amazing. The sun was rising here in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It was actually a really warm morning. I felt spring was in the air. I just felt amazing. And out of that amazingness, I thought to myself, I should reward myself for doing such a good job for the last couple weeks of me transforming my mind, my body, and just overall well-being. And in that progression, I realized, you know what? I could go to Cops, which is a, uh, a delicious custard ice cream. I know it sounds weird. Here in the Midwest, we use custard, which is... Um, egg yolks, heavy cream, a lot of fat, a lot of sugar, as opposed to ice cream, which is more of just standard milk um, and some like lighter milk and lighter sugar, whatever. I'm not going to get into details. As you can tell, I don't know real, the real difference, but all I know is custard has like 20 times more calories, but it tastes like butter in your mouth. Flavored butter sounds, yeah, actually that's not a good example. So with that, let's get into why did I feel that I needed to reward myself? Because in that moment, I was getting cocky and arrogant. I was saying to myself, because I did such a good job for two weeks, I should reward myself. Is that what excellent people do? Not really. They don't. They keep on pushing the envelope. They keep on going forward. And it made me realize early when I decided to go through this process of this cleanse, whatever you want to call it, I was insecure. I was like, oh my gosh, can I do it? Can I push away coffee? Can I push away the sweets? You know, can I force myself to work out one or twice, you know, two, two times a day at, at times? Um, no, you know, and, and as I step away from my example, I want you to step into your own world and your own example of what insecure means to you. Insecure to, means you could be part of your obviously overall health, the way your body is, your job, if you plan on moving or getting a promotion, or your relationships, your spiritual side, your, your family life, your personal world, whatever it is, where do you feel insecure? And a lot of us feel insecure in different areas. And if you're thinking to yourself, Jake, I don't feel insecure in any area, chances are is because you're so regimented in your schedule and your routine that you haven't opened up to different inputs that are allowing you to go, oh my gosh. 
I am I'm really weak in this area. It may be you may be awesome in your health, but you stink at social networking. You may be really good at social networking, but you absolutely are insecure in going out there and seeing what other jobs lay in front of you. And so you got to figure out your own secu- insecurities. And as time as I keep on talking here, hopefully this is something that you can realize and understand. And so let's get started. I want you to visualize a ladder. Now a ladder is Man, kind of complicated as in some people enjoy using a ladder to get to their gutters, to put a, a wreath on the house, to put Christmas lights on, whatever the case is. But to some other you know, people, they don't feel confident with the ladder, the process, the, the bringing it out. It's heavy. It's awkward. You don't feel good standing on the ladder by yourself. But I want you to use the ladder as a visual aspect as I go through the different rungs on the ladder. A rung is nothing more than obviously a, a place you step your foot on to climb up the ladder. And we can use an analogy of the ladder in multiple aspects. Um, atmospheres, right? Atmosphere of our work, you know, moving up the ladder in our job, moving up the ladder in our health or well-being, all different types of areas. So I want you to think, okay, you bring the ladder out of your garage, you lean it up against your house, um, your condo, your building, it, whatever it is. So let's just use that as an analogy, all right? So you bring it out, you lug it up, you set it up, and at first you're thinking, wow, this is a really tall ladder. But fortunately, the ladder we're going to be talking about today is only eight rungs. But it, depending on how comfortable you are with the ladder, I want you to visualize those rungs either being really close or really far apart, depending on your comfort level, level with that ladder. Now, I'm going to start at the bottom. The first rung on that ladder is insecurity. The second run, rung on that ladder is potential future value. The next is change. The next is progress. The next is cocky. The next is gut check. The next is change. The next is excellence. You're like, geez, Jake, I, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. But needless to say, I want you to think of your letter having eight rungs on it. So let's get started with the first rung, which is insecurity. Now, a I want you to replace the the insecurity of the height with your insecurity of your life, um, health, well-being, whatever. For this example, I'm going to use health because this is something we all go through on a regular basis. It doesn't matter who you are. We all have this battle. Should I eat the cake in the office room or shouldn't I? Should I have the milkshake or shouldn't I? Should I dive into cookies or shouldn't I? Should I go to the grocery store and buy ice cream along with my steak dinner or shouldn't I? Whatever the case is, I think health is an overall general feel, especially in the progress of well-being and personal improvement. So your insecurity is getting started in the health world, right? You walking into the gym, you joining a membership, maybe even just working out in the basement of your home, watching Beachbody or a pre-recorded workout series. Whatever the case is, your insecurity relies into that aspect of you getting started. Now, insecurities is a really good thing. Because insecurities allows us to open up. We're getting outside of our comfort zone. Like I said earlier, getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. Being insecure is not always a bad thing. Being insecure is a reminder of what we don't know or the potential of where we could go or the potential of who we are truly. Now, there's times that we are all insecure in different aspects, and that's okay. Don't shy away from things. You can either attack things or progressively move into things. So in the progression of our ladder, obviously, we are going to start to step up our ladder. We know that we need to do a better job with our health, so we're going to stand on that lower rung. And that rung is representing our overall health and, of course, the insecurities that associate with it. The only way that we can move up that ladder is to understand that being insecure will lead us to better and greater things. Obviously, if we invest time working out, watching what we put into our mouths, uh, the, the things that we're sucking on or eating throughout the day is either going to help us or hurt us. The only way that it's going to help us in the progress of moving forward, even though we're insecure, we need to think of the potential future value, PFV. What is the PFV associated with health? Now, again, feel free to rotate your own personal aspect of your personal insecurity into this equation. Your PFV is nothing more than understanding that if I work out, I do a better job with my health. I'm going to have more energy. I'm going to look good. I'm going to feel good. I'm going to feel invincible. It's going to give me the confidence to move forward. It's going to give me the confidence to get a better job, the confidence to stand up to whoever it is that you want to stand up to. Obviously, there's a lot of great benefits with having good general health. 
So the next rung that we're going to stand on is potential future value. By standing on that rung, we feel strong. We feel secure. We understand that it's going to work out because we have this vision of our future. We have the vision of what potentially can be. Now, of course, are you going to be insecure on that second rung? Of course, because you're a little higher off the ground. You're you maybe white knuckling it at, that, at this time, but regardless, you're staying on that second rung because you know that each step that you keep on moving up, the closer you are to that potential future value. So the next rung, the third rung in our journey here, we start with insecure, potential for future value. Our third rung is change. Change is really the equation that really comes in and alters if we move forward or we digress down the ladder. Now, change has a lot of different definitions, but the change that I want to associate with us today in an example of health and well-being is habits, routines, and frameworks. Those are the things that associate with pretty much anything, right? If you want to become successful or make more money, you need to have better habits or routines and better frameworks Frameworks that allow you to move forward in that regard. The same with your health, exactly, especially the example that we're using today. You want to do a better job with food? You need to have better food habits. You want to have you do a better job with exercise? Exercise? You need to have better exercise routines implemented into your world. We understand that. So we know that if we we want to start moving forward towards that ultimate health, towards excellent health, we need to take a next step up, which is going to be change. Is it going to be uncomfortable? Is it going to be daunting? Is it going to feel eerie? Are we going to be scared? Is it going to challenge us in multiple different facets? Of course, but we understand that's the progress. Anybody that is listening to this right now, myself included, we understand that there are trials and tributes that we have to kind of jump over and leap over to get to the destination that we want to go. Now, the only way that we can keep on moving up that ladder is if we have this thing associated with change. If we change our habits, if we change our routines, and we change our frameworks, what needs to happen for us to take the next step up that rung? What is it? What would you think it is? It's a word that starts with a P, and it's a word that we all need to keep on moving forward. It's called progress. If we invest the time, the the energy, the money, the resources in getting sure that our habits, routines, and frameworks start to change, we start to change. And when we start to change, we start to see the, say it with me, progress. Progress. If the progress is there, we will keep on moving up that ladder. We will keep moving forward with our health. We'll keep on going to the gym. We'll keep on eating better. We'll keep on improving ourselves. We all get that. It's awesome. We've all been there. We all understand this process. I'm not seeing anything crazy yet. I'm just putting into a framework that you can understand. But this is where the slippery slope happens. So now we're on the fourth step right now. We're hanging out. We're on progress. And we're starting to get up pretty high. But yet we feel good about ourselves because, you know what, I'm moving forward. I'm getting farther away from the ground. I'm getting far far away from, a.k.a., where I started. And you're moving up that ladder. So the next step, the next step in our equation is where people either slip off or they keep on rising. And the fifth step is cocky. Now, cocky has a lot of different terms, a lot of different ideas behind it. You can call it arrogance. You can call it all different types of terms. We're not going to get into it. Cocky is one of those things that people either love cocky individuals or cocky is one of those things where people hate individuals who are cocky. But in the world of self-reflection, this, the world of self-personal um, uh, like self-check, Cocky is something we all go through in a progression of changing, resetting, whatever you want to call it. We've all been there. And I was there this this morning walking out of the gym. I was getting cocky. We all get it. Because when you start to get outside of your insecurities, when you start to make progress, when you see the value of who you are, you see the change happening, you start to get cocky. And that is where the change starts to happen not in a good way usually. And when we start thinking in a cocky sense, we start to say to ourselves, hey, look at me, I'm doing a great job. Congratulations to me. And then you start to say to yourself, I don't need this person in my life. I don't need to read. I don't need um, I don't need to eat good. I don't need to study. I don't need to have that mentor. I don't need to have these people in my life. I don't need to listen to those podcasts or those audiobooks. I don't need to always eat healthy. I can start to, uh, you know what, incorporate chips into my life again. Or I could, in my case, have some ice cream as a celebration. And on that cocky rung, we start to kind of get a little arrogant. 
And when you start to get arrogant and cocky, you start to just kind of be more relaxed. You're not having that death grip on the ladder. You're not making sure you have four points of contact. Four points of contact would be one leg, two legs, one hand, one hand would be four points of contact. And you know what? We're going to check our cell phone, and we're going to pull it out of our pocket, and instead of four points of contact, we have three points of contact. And you know what? i got to text my friend, so I'm going to lean into the ladder and wrap my arms around that ladder and text somebody. So now you only have literally two points of contact with your feet. And so as you can see, the people that are live into that cocky space, the more you hang out into that cocky notion, the more you hang out on that cocky rung, you're going to feel more comfortable, you're going to feel more confident, you're going to feel like you're on top of the world, and what happens to those individuals that don't continue to move the progress ladder up? They fall off the ladder. They fall down to the ground. They get a little self-check, a little holy geez, I just cracked my melon on the ground, I can't do that again. And we've all been there. We've all tried it with our health. We've all tried it with our job. We all tried it in a hobby. We all tried it on a spring break vacation. We all tried it in our financial world by, by spending too much on Christmas. We're a little cocky because we got a little bonus. And next thing you know, we, we have debt. And you're thinking to yourself, how did I go in debt even though I had a Christmas bonus? Is because you got cocky. You got arrogant. You thought you had all the money in the world, but you realize that you don't. And we've all fallen off that rung. Now, the individuals that are cocky, and you're thinking to yourself, Jake, I've been in that cocky world, but I push past. All right, well, hear me out on this next step. When you choose, when cocky individuals choose to step up just a little more, that's where truly the gut check comes into play. They're obviously higher up on the rung. They're obviously realizing that if they're not having four points of contact, they start to alter a little bit. And when you get into a middle of a ladder, have you ever noticed how that ladder starts to flex a little bit in the, in the middle? That's where truly that gut checks comes into play. I'm higher off the ground. I'm in the middle of the ladder. So the structure isn't as secure. There's going to be a little more give or take, depending if you have a fiberglass ladder or aluminum ladder. The reason why I so, know so much about ladders is because I work for the fire department. We use ladders every single day of the week. And so with that regard, I understand that when you get into the middle of a ladder, there's a lot of flex. And the flex is designed there to obviously give and take depending on how much weight is on that ladder. Now, some people you see that as a scare tactic. They see it as, I can't go forward. Some people understand the ladder, as in, a.k.a., they understand the process. So it allows them to go, okay, there's going to be flex. It's going to give. It's going to move a little bit, but that's okay. I'm going to keep moving forward. So that sixth rung is the gut check. On that sixth rung, we start to understand, oh, boy, I'm getting towards the top. Oh, boy. I need to either hold on or I'm going to fall off and I'm even higher than I was before. And in that gut check, that's where a lot of decisions take place. Obviously, if you're cocky and arrogant, you're going to fall off the ladder. Once you step onto that gut check, it refocuses your vision. It gets back to you the potential future value of who you can potentially become. It also makes us reflect on the progress that we have made to that ladder because you start to freak out a little bit. You start to go, oh my gosh, I don't know if I can move forward. I don't know if I can do this. And we start to have that doubt, that, that self-doubt that peeks into our brain. I call it the doubt man that sits in our the cerebral cortex that kind of pulls and pushes different level levers and buttons just like that movie um, Inside. Uh, I think it's a Disney movie. I, can't, I totally botched it. My kids watch it all the time. It's a Disney movie called Inside something. I totally messed it up. I can't remember. But it doesn't matter. So you're, we're hanging on that gut check, and that's truly where the gut check comes into play. We understand where we were and where we want to go. In that, we have our potential future vision. PFV, it's potential future vision. And then we understand the progress that got us to where we are. From that gut check... We reground ourselves from that gut check. We understand on where we got to go and we get focused back into the whole realm of I need to start reading again. I got to get those podcasts going. I got to start hanging around the right people. I got to start eating the three, four times a day, whatever it is. I got to eat the healthy stuff, the, all that different types of jazz to make sure that you can become excellent in whatever it is that you want to be. From there, the next rung up, the seventh rung, even though we are getting really close to excellence, is more change. Change has to come into the picture again. The only way to reach excellence is for us to change even more than the change that happened in the third rung. 
Now, you may be lost here a little bit, but that's okay, because the whole point here is we're progressing up. The only way to reach that excellent position is to change even more than where we're currently at. You need to refine the ideas. You need to get back to the amazing things that have altered your health. That's the example that we're using, right? That's the example we're using in this case, that has allowed you to have great energy, great uh, appearance, great feeling, great confidence about you. And once you start to see that change once and more, that is your springboard. That is your starting gate to truly what is called, quote unquote, your excellence, your ultimate, your freaking awesomeness, whatever you want to call it, or your, your pinnacle. And in that progressions, we haven't made it, but it has allowed us to reach the rooftop. It has allowed us to do more work on whatever the ladder is leaned into. Because again, just because we reach the top rung doesn't mean we stop there and we just enjoy the, the sunshine and, and the clouds. No, we get off the ladder. We keep on moving forward. We grab that ladder. If that was on the lower level, we pull it up to the, the upper level, whatever the case is for you. And again, use whatever example that you want. But in reflection here, I want to go through it one more time so you understand that anytime you choose to change, the progression of change, you're going to be insecure. The only way to move forward is to make sure you have an awesome potential future value or vision of yourself. The next step that has to happen, you got to change some more. You got to get those habits, routines, and frameworks that allow you to keep on moving up the ladder. The next thing that is going to pull you forward and to make sure that what you're doing is correct and, and allows you to move forward is progress. The next step after that is cocky and arrogance. That's where a lot of people fall off. They get a little too, ah, look at me. I did it. I'm, I'm doing all right. I'm going to run up to the top. And that's where they slip and fall. The next step, if they are cocky, but they, they know that they can progress a little bit further, that's where the gut check help happens. They're farther off the ground. They're really making progress. Oh my gosh, I, I got to get recentered here if I want to make it all the way to the top. The next after that is changing even more. You got to change those habits, routines, and frameworks even more to dial them in to make sure you're structured and rigid in your progress of, of excellence. And then that top, top rung, the eighth rung in our example here is excellence. It's, it's that you made it to that point. But as we know, there's always so much more room to grow. People that lose 20 pounds, usually they either don't stop there. They don't go, oh, I lost 20 pounds. I'm good. They either keep on pushing the envelope and they lose 30 pounds and 40 pounds. Or they hit that excellence and they fall back off the ladder. I want to be clear here. Cockiness can happen any step of the way. It doesn't matter. Chances are it's not going to happen the first couple of rungs because you're trying to figure it out. You're nervous and excited. and ah. But once you get past the, the progress stage, every level is, is cocky. Even when you're at excellence, you're feeling awesome, amazing, you can get cocky and slip off the ladder. So the whole point of this podcast and the whole point of this episode is not so much to tell you how amazing I am at ladders. It is truly for you to understand what needs to happen for you to move forward? Now, I'm going to link a story that happened to me, man, when I was like probably 13 years old. It was when I twisted my ankle. And when I twisted my ankle, I had to go to the hospital. They did x-rays. Everything looked fine. It was a severe sprain, ankled, ankle. And um, if you ever sprained your ankle severely, it hurts like the bonkers. It was inflamed. It was black and blue, all different types of colors. They, the the doctor gave me crutches. They gave me a wrap to put around it, all that stuff. I rested and stuff. As time progressed, I got very good at crutches. I also could bear a little bit of weight on my ankle, so I was getting what stage would you say I was at? If I saw the progression, I was getting better at using my crutches. I was getting better health-wise. I was in the cocky stage. And you know what I decided to do? I decided to use my crutches to walk myself down my stairs in my home. Now, if you ever have tried to use crutches walking down the stairs, it is not a good idea. It is not a good idea. And this is why. Because if you put your crutches down one step and then decide to kind of hinge your body to move forward, I don't know if you can visualize this, but because the step is lower than where you're currently at, you're going to your crutches are like a fulcrum and they launch your body forward. And if you can visualize this, I launched myself forward completely down the stairs face first. Luckily, my parents had new carpeting and there was a new pad, so my, <laughs> my face wasn't tore up. But when I put the crutches down one step than where I was and I leaned forward to kind of hop, hop forward and to get to that next step, I leveraged myself almost as a hinge 
to slingshot myself completely face forward down the stairs. It was absolutely miserable. I laid there for like five minutes crying to myself because, of course, nobody was there in the house. And I was angry and sad and I was concerned. But at the end of the day, I stopped crying. I reflected. I go, my God, that was the dumbest thing I could have ever done in my life. And nonetheless... (laughs) <laughs> being cocky brought me back down to ground zero because I re-injured my ankle a little bit. I felt horrible. My face was all banged up, my elbows, my shins, all that stuff. And of course, I felt just like a complete goof. And so in that progression, it brought me back down. And sometimes that happens and that's okay because what happens out of those moments where we get cocky and arrogant? We get reminders. We reflect and we go, wow, that was really a bad idea. I'm never going to do that again. We learn from it. So when you start back at uh, step one, you understand, okay, well, I'm not going to do that again. So when you do get cocky and arrogant, you're not going to repeat the same thing that you did before. You're probably going to get cocky and arrogant because you're trying something else. The same with me. I understood that being cocky and arrogant led me to the path of wanting ice cream, but because I've done that before has allowed me to understand that, okay, I got to push past this. I cannot go in and celebrate with ice cream. That is not the answer. That is not where I need to be. And so from there, I understood that to move forward, I needed to have a gut check. And that gut check to me was, I did it in the past. I'm not going to do it again. I gripped harder. I made sure I had my four points of contact and I kept moving up the rung. So That's how we get from insecurity to cocky to excellence. So with that being said, I appreciate you guys. That's all I have for you ladies and gentlemen today. I thank you for taking time and joining me on Operation Self Reset. Hopefully this was inspiring to you. Hopefully this was eye-opening to you. And hopefully this is something that you can use in your life to move forward. Again, the progress, the, the positions of the rungs may be closer or farther away depending on who you are. Insert your different examples of insecurities in your own personal life. And I guarantee it you will find value out of this episode in particular. If you're thinking to yourself, Jake, that was a magical performance. What can I do for you? Can I give you money? Can I give you a t-shirt? Can I write you letters? No, all I would ask is if you could go to iTunes and leave a review for me for this show, um, Operation Self Reset. Um, It would be greatly appreciated. The more reviews, the more uh, juice it allows this show to affect other people. So with that being said, I'm not going to take up more time uh, of your special day. I appreciate you. I thank you for joining me. If there's anything I can do for you, reach out to me, jake at operationselfreset.com. And don't forget, you're freaking awesome. And if you know somebody that needs a little bit of awesomeness in their own personal life, feel feel free to share this episode and or this podcast with them. I thank you so much from the bottom of my heart for being a part of this amazing podcast. And to all of our success in the next couple of weeks, we will catch you next week, Wednesday, for another great episode of Operation Self Reset. We'll see you.